Imagine you are creating a football app or a game. One team has 11 players on the field, so we'll need to create 11 variables for each player, right? And another 11 for the opposing team, and then even more for substitutions. In this example, we have 32 lines of code already just for creating variables. This is where the array comes in. An array allows us to store multiple variables of the same type under a single identifier. So instead of creating 11 separate player variables, you can create one players variable with 11 what we call elements to store them in. Let's see how we code this. Here we've declared an array with five elements to store different countries. It is common to use a plural identifier name in arrays to represent the fact that multiple values are in this array. It also makes it easier for programmers to identify which variables are arrays and which are not. If it is a plural, then it is an array. We know we have five elements because we have put the number five in the second set of square brackets. But how do we add values to this array? Like this. As you can see, all we need to do is use the variable identifier, this one is called countries, then in some square brackets, the element of the array. After that, it acts as a normal variable does. You may have noticed that I added the first value in element zero. That is because like most languages, c -sharp starts its array value at zero instead of one. So we still have five values in this array, we just start counting at zero instead of one. You may be wondering what happens if we try to add a value to an element that we haven't declared. Well, let's see. As you can see, the code does allow us to add the value. However, when we run the code, we receive an error one line after the offending piece of code called an out of range or out of bounds error. This happens when you try to add or output an element of an array that does not exist. Many programming languages are incapable of detecting this error without actually running the code first, so it's an easy logic error to make. If I edit my code slightly, we can even use an input into the array just like a regular variable. I can even output elements just like a variable. In this example, I am outputting element zero and element four of my array. Now this is all very nice, but it's not that different from using regular variables, maybe only saving us a little bit of time. However, the true power of the array comes into play when you combine it with the for loop. Let's look at an example. Using a single for loop, I was able to loop through the entire array one at a time and output each element. Breaking down the code, we have used our for loop and created our i variable inside the condition and we will keep looping while the i is less than 5, and it increases by 1 each time it loops through the array. In other words, the value of i will start at 0 and end at 4. Do you remember how we output each of our countries before using 0 to 4? Well, if the value of i is going to be iterated from 0 to 4, then we can use that i value inside the loop and output each element using two lines of code instead of 5. This method of combining for loops with arrays is a very useful technique to master if you want to become a good coder, as it can turn hundreds of lines of code into two or three. If you were wondering what would happen if I changed this five to a six, then we would get an out of bounds error. This is because the value of i in the final loop would be equal to five, which in this array does not exist. Therefore, we are out of bounds. Let's make one change to this code. Instead of looping from 1 to 5, we have used a command called dot length instead. The array name dot length command is a variable that contains the value of the array length. In this instance, it would be 5. I would recommend this method of looping through an array instead of hard coding the number because it makes it easier to change the length of the array without having to also change the values for every loop too. This loop is not just used to output all elements of an array, it is used to refer to each element in the array. Let's use this for loop to use an input into the array instead. As you can see, I've turned what could be several lines of code into two simple lines saving me time. We don't have to create an array of strings either. We can create an array of any variable type, for example, an array of integers. Now. Putting each value into an array one line at a time is kind of annoying, 
So let's save some coding space and do this instead. If we use curly brackets at the end of an array declaration, we can input all values into a single line as long as we put a comma between those values. Remember that this is an integer array, so we don't put quotation marks around each value. If it was a string array, we would need to. Also notice that I no longer needed to declare the length of the array because we already have declared this by placing them in the same line. Now let's really test our skills by completing some of these challenges. If you can do all five challenges without help, then let me know in the comments. If you would like to see step-by-step -step answers to these challenges, there will be a follow-on video which I will pin in the comments. If you learned something new from this video or enjoyed it otherwise, please give this video a like and tap that subscribe button for more coding videos.